Welcome Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, loyal subscribers, and all the new people. How you doing? My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your you know what, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. And today I have a Velocity Banking scenario for you regarding a mom. We're going to be serving a mom today on the board here. We're going to be doing Velocity Banking to pay off debt extremely fast, leveraging a personal line of credit to our advantage so that we can offset our interest cost of borrowing, increase cash flow, build credit score, lower expenses, retain cash flow, build my beautiful kingdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So I am super excited to share this scenario with you. And we're also going to compare our results to the debt snowball concept. What I'm going to do is do velocity banking conservatively. I'm going to use conservative numbers, okay? And then I'm going to put it up against the debt snowball concept, and I'm going to be aggressive with the debt snowball concept. I'm going to give debt snowball some leverage over velocity banking, and let's see how the results pan out. Let's really put this to uh, the test. So let's dive into the details. Four major numbers. Individual, mom, making $4,250 a month. Expenses, currently $3,682. My total debt is $70,491.89. My starting cash flow is $568 per month. I have a personal, unsecured, revolving line of credit calculated simple interest for $20,000 at a 7.49% interest rate. We are in the state of Nueva York, New York. Okay, that's where we're at. We're in Brooklyn specifically. We have a credit union that covers that area that we like. It's called Santander Bank. There's another bank in, uh, in up north, uh, I think Long Island area. It's called Beth Page Federal Credit Union. These are nice size credit unions that can serve the state of Jersey, I believe, New York, Pennsylvania. The surrounding states of New York uh, are going to be some nice credit unions. So if you are an existing client, soon-to-be client, or just observer of the Velocity Banking concept, and you're considering obtaining a line of credit in your favor and you live in New York, New Jersey, and maybe some of the surrounding states, you might want to take a look at Santander Bank or Beth Page Federal Credit Union. Um, these are awesome banks. I know PenFed is also great. Uh, Regions Bank, Wells Fargo, TD Bank. When you're doing your research, finding a personal line of credit, you're going to want to look in your vicinity, right? Do about a, maybe a 25 10 to 25 mile radius, watch my videos on how to obtain a line of credit to who, what, when, where, why, how, okay, all the details. Give yourself time to understand and be able to read the terms and agreements so you're obtaining the proper debt tool before you freaking apply and get denied at that credit union. I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of people applying because they watch two videos on YouTube and they get denied. Then here I am, I'm putting out a whole series, I'm trying to get you on the right track Oh, You gotta pay attention. You gotta read between the lines. You gotta have a patience. Okay, you might have to do that snowball before you jump into velocity banking. So now let me break down the debts. These are all the debts that we have currently. I'll start from the top, work my way down. We have a credit card, Bank of America, 75 bucks is the debt. 19.49% interest rate, it's 25 bucks a month. You got another credit card, Bank of America, 506 is the debt, 12.9% is the interest rate, 50 bucks a month monthly payment. Then we have a, a debt with PayPal, uh, the debt's $250, and we owe 50 bucks a month. Another credit card, $1,867.46, 11.6% eleven point six percent interest rate monthly payment eighty five dollars and we have another credit card 
are at $2,126 as the debt, 29.24% interest rate, my God. And that monthly payment is $125 a month. Next, we have a student loan, $5,824.08. Monthly payment, $130. Interest rate, 5.4%. We have a loan with American Express, $3,424.15. 8.9% is the interest rate. Monthly payment, $222.57. And we got a big fat little debt right here. Student loan, $39,812.98, 4.2% interest rate, monthly payment, $241. Now, we also have two IRS debts, one for $8,836.21, where the monthly payment is $650, and then we also have $6,550 and a penny, where the monthly payment is $300, so two IRS debts. Currently, as I record this video, we are in April of 2020 during a crisis. So, so we are in a financial crisis, health crisis, a lot of things going on in society, a lot of seals being broken. Just kidding. Don't know that information just yet. Haven't really fully read Revelations, but if you did, you might get a little stunned and you might start to, uh, I don't know, get a little Holy Spirit coming through you because you realize, oh man, are we approaching the you know what times? Don't know. What I do know is that the Lord tells us that when the kingdom has been preached upon all the world and all the people, then the end will come. So far, a lot of people don't even know what the kingdom means is, where it comes from, who represents it. So I believe we have some time. So therefore, the way I interpret a crisis is an opportunity. A crisis is an event that you have no control over. It's simply an event that we have no control over. So it's not good or bad. It's simply an event. I have no control over it. How do I gain control over my circumstances? I need to have some kingdom authority. I need to be confident in who I am, what I'm doing, what's my purpose in life, and where I'm going. Answering those four major questions, along with knowing your four major numbers in life so that we can execute the things that you need to do on this earth. Hallelujah. Anyways, anyways, let me not preach because if I do, we'll be here all day. Anyways, let's dive into the actual a routine of velocity banking here. Now, before this mother makes any moves regarding the velocity banking concept, what have we done so far? We analyzed the numbers. We know where we're at, where we stand. We now have to identify what the, what the strategy is of velocity banking and how to determine our chunk payment. All right. And before we identify the chunk payment, we have our debt tool, which we've already applied for, got approved. Before I even use that line of credit, I need to make sure I have all my banking going to that one central location. So wherever I have my debt tool at, it is wise when you're first starting out. It is also simple to simplify the concept to have all your paychecks, all your income, go to that checking account at the same bank that you have a line of credit with, as well as having all your expenses come out of that checking account. It's also wise to redirect savings, emergency funds, just put everything in one location. It's going to make your life super simple, super simple. So once we've done that, for her, this should take a couple of weeks to do. So we're projecting that this chunk will occur towards the end of April, somewhere maybe first two weeks of May is what I predict in terms of making this first chunk. Now, I did write on the board that our first chunk is going to be $14,795.62, and we're going to get a cash flow gain of $857.57. But I want to invite you 
into my mind for just a minute here and really show you how I come up with the chunk amount, how much money I'm going to leverage out of this line of credit. So the first thing that I do after I've analyzed the four major numbers is I take that cash flow number, the 568 times it by 12. That's $6,816 for the whole year. What that tells me is that if I was to do debt snowball, the most amount of debt that I can throw starting off at debt okay, is $6,816. So if I am to beat the debt snowball concept in terms of results, in terms of speed and time, I must chunk higher than that number, right? Because if I don't, then I'm going to get similar results to that snowball. And typically we want to blow that snowball out of the park. We really want to make sense as to why we're doing such a move. So 6,816, that's the first number I grab. The second number that I grab is I take the credit limit of $20,000. I times that by 66%. That's $13,200. So now I have created a range in terms of what I'm going to chunk at and how much. I've created a range here. My range is cash flow times 12 and 66% of the line of credit. That's my range. That's how I decide how much, how high I will chunk. I usually do not go above 13,200, but there are some exceptions to the rule that I've mentioned in the past, which is if there is a large cash flow gain potential, boom. If there is a large interest savings potential, boom, 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 29, 8.9, 12.9, 19.49. Look at all these interest rates savings that I can avoid by simply consolidating into one debt, 7.49%. So that makes sense from a debt consolidation standpoint, but we're not just doing debt consolidation. We have to take it a step further to actually get significant results. So that's the first thing, right? Got my range. And then if I need to justify going above the range, I need to be able to answer those two exemptions, high cash flow, high interest savings. So let's start from 6,816, work our way up in terms of what am I going to chunk at? Out of all these debts here, I'm confused, Enzo. Which one do I tackle? The biggest one, the lowest one, which one do we do? Now, typically with velocity banking, the way I teach it, I usually go after the smallest debts and work my way up, which is very similar to debt snowball perspective as well. So that is an alignment. Uh, I typically do that because majority of the people I serve, right? It's all about who you serve, the type of person you're dealing with. I'm dealing with people who have not managed money properly their entire lives. I'm dealing with people that have only known Dave Ramsey debt snowball. I'm dealing with people that have never known what true abundance of wealth financially means, right? To obtain high amounts of, of, of money and be able to manage that. So I'm not dealing with those types of people. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with people that, um, that are, have been struggling financially. I'm not dealing with people who have been doing well financially. If I was, velocity banking is not even a debate. That, matter of fact, these guys are on a whole nother level. Cash flow banking, infinite banking, tax strategies, 10x. Okay, they're on a whole nother ball game. They're on the the B and the I quadrant side. Okay. Meanwhile, the, the people that I serve are typically coming from the E and the S quadrant, employee and self-employed. I typically do not serve people on the B and the I side in terms of helping them with their finances. If I do, that means that they came from this side, the E and the S. And they brought that spirit of fear over to the B and the I. And when you bring that spirit of fear, that spirit of doubt, that spirit of mismanagement, mammon, right? You don't really ever, you didn't really ever leave the E and the S quadrant. It's kind of like the people that got freed out of Egypt, the, the, 
the Jew, the people that Moses freed out of Egypt and brought them into the desert. Yeah, he delivered them, but they didn't actually achieve freedom because their mind never changed. And so when I'm working with people, I'm trying to attack the mind first. I'm trying to shift the way you think about money, what you think you know about money, to unlearn and relearn how money actually works in the 21st century so that we can maximize our dollars. Very simple. So if I'm going to mimic that snowball, started from the, the bottom, working my way up, let's just start adding these debt balances to the equation. We got 75 bucks. We got 506, right? The 250, okay? The next one is the 1,867, 46, okay? And then we got 2,000, 126, that puts me at 4,824.46. And then we've got the the next one is the loan, 3,424.15. So that's 8,248.61. So it's a little bit above the 6,816. Can we justify going above 6,816? Well, let's let's look, right? Let's see what would be the cash flow gain based on one, two, three, four, five, six debts being paid off all at once. Debt consolidation. So I'm shifting 19.49%, 12.9%, 11.6%, 29.24%, 8.9%. I'm moving. I'm shifting $25, $50, $50, $85, 220, 257, 125. Do you see that? that that's simply debt consolidation. Now we got to take it a step further. So $25 plus 50 plus 50 plus 85 plus 125 plus 222.57. That puts me at a total cash flow gain of 557.57. So add that to my existing cash flow of 568. You get one thousand. $125.57. Now what you do is take that number, times it by 12. That's 13,506.84. I now have justified breaching my cash flow times 12 and going all the way up to 66% of the line of credit. Because by doing so, what happens? I get a higher cash flow game. I have a potential to get more cash flow and save more money on interest and retain my cash flow in the process of paying off debt. So now let's come back to that 8,248.61 number, which was one, two, three, four, five, six debts getting paid off all at once for the 557, whatever cash flow gain that was. Now let's think. Okay, what other debt can I throw in here to make the full chunk of somewhere around 13 grand? What would what would make sense here? Now, one thing I do want to point out is due to the crisis that we're in, the government has put a halt on interest being accrued on student loan debt. So what I told my client to do was to find out if the monthly payment is still required, right? To figure out if the 130 and the 241 is still required because if not, what we have here is interest-free debts for a period of time. Yes, I still owe the money, but it's not accruing any interest on the principal. And if I don't have to make that monthly payment of 130 and 241, that's over 300 and seventy dollars that I could use in my velocity banking strategy, so that I can uh, maximize and pay off my line of credit even faster, even faster. So something to really consider here. Now, I'm not going to factor that in yet because I don't have those details as I record this video. But what I do see that is the most effective debt that I should pay off out of the remaining ones 
is the IRS debt for 6550 Reason being is because the IRS is charging high interest rate, right? Number one, the payment is $300. The next closest debt to that is the 5824 and it's only $130 a month. So if I shifted $5,800 over to the line of credit, I only get $130. But for about $700 higher, I can shift $6,500 and get a $300 cash flow gain and save a bunch of money in interest. I don't have the interest rates on the IRS debts, but I'm assuming these bad boys are at least 6 7% or even higher than that. So when I add the... 605501 that puts me at 147862 and it looks like homeboy over here made a mistake shoot that's all right only a $3 difference nothing crazy so the chunk is actually 147862 all right and that is going to come out of the line of credit all at once so here's what it looks like in reality when you log into your online banking here. Okay, so you got your you got your checking account, you got your line of credit. All right. When I'm ready to make my chunk towards these seven debts. So here's what's happening. One, two, three, four, five, six. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven debts are being paid off. I'm paying off all the credit cards, the PayPal, the one American Express loan, and one IRS debt. Seven debts, wiped out, 857 cash flow gain. That puts me at a total of 1425.57 cash flow moving forward. And I save a ton of money on interest on the back end of these debts, right? I remove all the interest up front. Now, whatever interest I pay on that freaking line of credit I don't actually pay that. It's not coming out of my income. Why? Because it was it was coming out of these payments. These payments, the 25, the 50, the 50, the 125, the 85. So it was it was interest I was already going to pay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just now paying a portion of that now. A very very small portion. And so what that means is I offset my cost of borrowing. So when we're taking money out of the line of credit, here's what happens. I do a withdrawal to the checking account of 14,798.62. And I pay bills, right? I then get cash flow, interest savings that will start to appear in the checking account. And then when I receive income, from the institution, uh, from my pay, right? From corporation that I work for. She works for the uh, United States Postal Service. So her income has not been affected during the crisis. So that's why we're doing velocity banking in a crisis because our income has not been affected. We have a line of credit. We have cash flow. We know our numbers. Everything's solid. So when the income lands in my checking account, the first thing that has to happen is I need to transfer money back to the line of credit. When I transfer all my income back to the line of credit, understand that that is counted as a payment to the 14K that I owe. So what happens is before the statement even comes out that I owe X, Y, and Z, it's going to say you owe nothing. If I owe nothing, then that means no interest is accruing on the money I dumped in there. The only interest that's accruing is the remaining balance of which I borrowed, which was interest I was going to pay anyways. Anyways. Come on. Are we waking up here? God, I hope I am just like really hitting a nerve where you're like, wow, where have I been? What have I been doing with my money? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? How can I maximize master money so it does not master me? Amen? So check this out. Here's what's happening now. For the month of May, income's going to go into the line of credit, 4250 
my expenses have now dropped for the month of May. 2,824.43 are my new expenses. Now, in reality, her chunk is going to be a little bit less, maybe by two, three hundred dollars or so. And the reason being is because we're in the month of April and we're preparing to make our chunk. So she still has to pay her bills. So in reality, maybe this credit card is actually maybe already paid off and she'll make these regular payments, right, for the month of April because April is not done yet. So in reality, the chunk's going to be lesser, but I'm putting a higher chunk because like I said, I'm using conservative numbers here. So what I have here is by the end of May, my balance on the personal line of credit should be somewhere around $13,370.05, okay? The amount of interest that I pay in the first month, let's see. Let's be, let's be real over the top, over exaggerate on my interest costs. Let's just do that. 14,798.62 times it by 7.49%. That's $1,108.41. Divide that by 12. $92.36. So the most amount of interest I can possibly pay on this line of credit is $92.36. Let me ask you a question. The 857.57 that I shifted into that line of credit, how much of that 857.57 was getting charged interest if I'm paying 19.49, 12 12.9, 11.6, 29 29.24, 8.9%, right? Like just this 227.57 alone at least 60 bucks is going towards interest on that one. On this 125, at least $40 is getting stripped on that. On this 11.6, another 30 bucks being stripped on that. Right, do you see? There's no cost of borrowing. I've brought it all the way to zero. In fact, I'm actually making money because I'm paying off debt so fast. Seven debts, first chunk, amen. Somebody better praise the Lord. Somebody just gave their life to Christ. I'll tell you that right now. Think I'm crazy. That's okay. Anyways, let's keep moving down the line. Month by month, income goes in, expenses come out, cash flow stays, 1425 to 57. That's all principal. None of that is getting charged interest. None of it. Only the remaining balance on the line of credit, whatever that is. And even that, I'm not worried about the interest on that. Why? Because I was going to pay it anyway. Duh. Okay, now I'm just paying a portion, small portion. So if $92 was in the first month, then I can guarantee you that the following month is going to be less. Right? So $92 was the absolute max. But that's impossible. I'm not going to get charged that much. Why? Because I just threw in four grand. Boom, drops the balance down to 10, 28 comes back out, 13. So maybe it looks like 80 bucks interest. The following month, it'll drop between like 10 and 15 bucks. And every single month after that, it'll keep dropping, right? So June, my balance drops to 11,944.48. Income goes in, expenses out. July, 10,518.91. August, $9,093.34. The goal, when we're paying off a line of credit after making a chunk, the goal is to try to zero it out within six to nine months. That's the goal. No more than nine months. If you go faster than six months, you're freaking awesome, right? That means you probably were minimalizing, cutting back on expenses, redirecting cash flow, cutting off retirement uh, uh, investing, Right, and just redirecting all the control back to you, control over your circumstances. Okay. So August, right, nine thousand nine thirty four. Uh, September seven thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars seventy seven cents. Oh my God. October balance goes down to six thousand two forty two twenty. November four thousand eight sixteen sixty three. December is a key month here. 
I still owe money on the line of credit. Three thousand three ninety one oh six. Worst case scenario, we're in our eighth month. Guaranteed by the ninth month, it would be zeroed out. But see, when we're doing velocity banking, we do not have to pay off the line of credit in full all the time, especially if I have a high credit limit in comparison to my income, high cash flow from the first chunk, and a potential enough space to make another chunk to pay off more debt extremely fast. So rather than waiting to pay off the line of credit, I can simply run it back up again and save even more money and get paid and get debt paid off in advance earlier. So December, if I have a balance of 3,391.06, let's evaluate what I can do in terms of a chunk. Looking at the cash flow number, it's Four thousand. Well, it's one thousand four twenty-five, fifty-seven times twelve. Seventeen thousand one hundred six eighty-four is my new chunk number. I could chunk that high. Am I not quite? Don't need to. Not necessary to do to go that high in terms of chunking. My income would not make sense in terms of in doing such a move. I could do it. But I would rather not. It's high utilization. Um, I, again, this is, I, I like to be conservative with my velocity banking. So I'm going to kind of dial that back a little bit. Let's do the 20,000 times the 66%. That's 13,200. And then add the balance of 3,391. Six cents. That's 16,591.06. Still kind of high in my opinion, right? But let's just stick with that number for now, 16,591.06. And let's see what debts can I pay off? What, what can I direct my attention at? Now, what's interesting, the most attractive debt that I want to tackle is that IRS, 650, right? A month. So over eight months, I'm still paying 650 towards 8,836.21. So according to my math, what I have is that balance would be somewhere around 4,000 bucks. If I continue to pay the 130 on the student loan, based on the information that we gather, if we don't have to, then we won't. But if we have to, then we just keep paying it. The 130, that balance on the student loan for 58, We'll probably drop around 5K. So 5,000 plus 4,000 is 9,000. So 9,000 plus 3,391 and six cents. That's my chunk number that I actually would do that would make the most amount of sense. And I would get a four, no, I would get a $780 cash flow gain if I went ahead and tackled those next two debts for velocity banking. So let's review the results here. In an eight month time frame, doing velocity banking, I would have increased my cash flow the up to 1,425.57 on the first chunk. And then you add the 650 plus the 130 for a total cash flow gain of 2,205.57, right? And I would have paid off nine debts, nine debts in eight months. And my balance on the line of credit would go up to around 12, 13K, let's just say on the line of credit. So very similar to the first chunk. Now, let me ask you a question, if it took me eight months to bring the line of credit close to zero with 1400 cash flow how fast would i go with 2200 cash flow and a smaller chunk amount it's it's about a thousand bucks less than the first one so i would go a lot faster probably 50 percent faster probably only take me four or five months to knock it back down to zero that's incredible and then that third chunk I'll direct my attention towards the, uh, the 39K. So now let's evaluate that snowball. 
if I was to just simply take my 568, my measly 568 monthly cash flow, throw it at the smallest debt, starting with you know the 75 and the 250 and the 506, right? Working my way up, I would actually pay off six debts within eight months. So I'd be able to pay off credit card to two Bank of America credit cards, the PayPal, so one, two, three, four, five, six, the loan. So I would still have the student loans and the two IRS debts. Right, this is, this is math. There's no arguing when it comes to debt snowball. It's very, very simple. You just take the 568 each and every month, minus it from each debt. As you remove a debt, then your cash flow goes up, obviously, little by little, and boom. Right, so within eight months doing debt snowball, I pay off six debts. Velocity banking, I pay off nine debts. I have $2,200 in cash flow, and guess what? I never lost my cash flow in the process. It's all in the line of credit. And it's all in the interest savings as well that I'm going to accumulate through my debt payoff timeline. So which would you rather do, my friend? Are you ready to do velocity banking? Have you done your homework? Have you watched my videos? Have you done the velocity banking pregame work where you get your four major numbers in line, you get your debt tool, you, you, get, you do all the preliminary work. Maybe you do a little debt snowball to get your credit score up so that you can start with a line of credit, right? And one factor that I did leave out here is during this whole entire time to, to lower my interest cost of borrowing even further is we're also using a credit card of about $1,200 a month of bills that I can run through a credit card and get cash back rewards. So now, so it's my second debt tool. So it's my primary debt tool, the line of credit. My second debt tool is a credit card, right? So before I take this 28, 24, 43 out throughout a 30 day period, I'm swiping the credit card first, which buys me 20 plus days over here for the money to stay in the line of credit. And then when the credit cards do, I pull out a line of credit, pay the credit card in full, rinse and repeat. Another thing is uh, we have a stimulus, right? Check coming, I believe. So that's going to get pumped into the system here, bringing the line of credit down. So she'll probably have this thing paid off before December. And we also have $12,000 in savings, which we're not even using. Okay, this is what I love about Velocity Banking here is you get to control how you want to do velocity banking. If you want to have your cute little emergency fund off to the side and you don't touch it, hey, by all means, that's fine. If you want to keep contributing to your 401k and your retirement accounts, by all means, continue to do it. I'm not going to be against you on it, but when you ask me what I should do, I'm going to put you in my shoes, right? I'm going to, I'm going to put myself in your shoes with my knowledge and my understanding of how money works. And I make the conclusion that having money sit in a bank account doing nothing, I'm actually losing money. Having my money grow in a 401k account is actually losing money because every decade I lose 50% of my account, at least. Every decade there's at least two major crashes or something crazy that goes on in the market where I lose 20% of my value, 30% of my value, 40, 50% of my investment account value. And the amount of time that it takes to recoup that money takes a few years. And by the time I recoup my money, guess what? You lost some more money. But the way you make up for it is because you have to keep putting money into it. You got to keep feeding the beast. You got to feed the monster. It just becomes a bigger monster. And at the end of the tunnel, Uncle Sam smacks you with that tax, right? On the distributions when you're 59 and a half and you're old and gray and your back hurts and you already had two surgeries and just you're like, damn, this stuff sucks. So if you're that perspective, if you're on that mindset, that flow that I have, then you say, okay, damn, I can put this money back into my control and I can use it to maximize my dollars. So coming back to velocity banking here, that's what I like is we can re we're very flexible in terms of what we can do. So for her, 12,000 off to the side, we're not even using it. 
If she wants to use it for the second chunk, great. We can do like a little double chunking strategy. Hey, if she wants to throw that 12K in an infinite banking policy, cool, let's do it, right? But let's make sure we got our numbers right, we're doing the right stuff, we do our homework, we learn these concepts first before jumping into it, right? We take the time to learn, right? We, 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 we hire someone to help us, okay? I can be that person for you. Financial consulting and coaching is what I can bring to the table to help keep you accountable, right? If you don't like the coaching part, that's fine. Listen, when we jump on a phone call, it'll just be straight numbers, man. We are, you know, I'm not, I won't be pressing on your uh, financial perspectives and philosophy. I won't even challenge that. I'll just, hey, logically speaking, here's how we pay off debt. What are your four major numbers? Do you have your line of credit? What's your credit score? What are your assets? What's your emergency fund? Where are you going? What's your headed? What's the financial goal? What, what's the purpose, right? Bum, 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 bum. If that's what you want, I can provide it. If you want some financial coaching tied to that, I can provide that too. It's your, however you want, right? Well, I'm cool. I'm flexible. I'm young. I'm ready to go. Got a lot to learn. Got a lot to give. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. Coming to you with Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking, and Kingdom Authority. My purpose in life is to help moms achieve financial freedom through financial mastery and regain their kingdom authority in the household to become an effective leader and influence over the household, neighbors, coworkers, friends, family, and leave a beautiful legacy behind. I will last forever, my friend, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day. God bless.